Episode 131, Dissatisfied. Dario had asked Jade to take a bath and lie down in bed. Had he really only planned on giving her a massage? A massage is the most intimate thing you can do to another person. Dario pinched her thigh gently. Isn't it? Jade swallowed and could not say anything. Dario leaned close to her ear and murmured, You seem unsatisfied, like you want something else. You told me to wait for you just so you could give me a massage? Of course, said Dario. What did you think? Jade was suddenly furious. If he wanted to give her a massage, then why didn't he just say so? Mr. Foster, you're so annoying. Jade buried her face in the pillow. Dario patted her back and jostled her shoulder, but she would not get up. It has been so embarrassing. Furthermore, she suspected that he'd misled her on purpose. He was so calm and serious about the whole thing, he clearly wanted to see her make a fool of herself. Oh, is that so? If I'm so terrible, why do you want me so bad? Jade scrambled to a sitting position. Me? What are you even talking about? You're the one causing all the trouble. She punched Dario in the arm as hard as she could. He didn't even flinch. Anyway, she continued, I'm busy with the shoot and you didn't even text me. I'm the one who texted you every day. Dario just kept looking at her quietly. She finished. Why do I even bother with you? She realized she felt so much better when she said what she wanted to say. Before this, Jade had never been so undisciplined with him. She would not hit him or scold him, but now they were sitting casually on the bed together. Their relationship seemed to be getting closer. They were more like a couple who knew how to quarrel and had small conflicts. They were no longer as polite as before. Although their relationship was harmonious, Dara had always felt like something was missing, as though Jade lacked a will of her own or a certain spark. But he had clearly been wrong about that. She had plenty of spark. She was angry at him for neglecting her, and she felt comfortable expressing that. She could consider his feelings and have an open discussion with him. He suddenly felt much better about their marriage. She smacked him on the arm and he smiled at her. Jade, are you tickling me? No, I, I want to beat you to death. Jade scowled at him. Her anger was beginning to dissipate in the face of his extreme hotness. What? You want to be a widow? Dead men give terrible massages. I'm willing to risk it. Jade thought about hitting him again, but it was hardly going to do any good. Dario took her clenched fist, gently pried it open, and kissed her palm. Are you mad that I don't want to have sex with you? He asked bluntly, but quietly. He was surprised at Jade's expectations. He really had just wanted to serve her well with a massage. Sex wasn't on his mind, at least no more than usual. It was confusing to be a husband today. What? Jade snapped. What? I'm, I'm angry at you for messing with me. She was so flustered that she stumbled over her words. He was right, but there was no way she could admit that to him. Okay, I will definitely not let you misunderstand next time. Dara exerted his strength, and Jade fell heavily into his arms. She stiffened for an instant, and he lifted her up. He threaded his hand through her hair and pressed his lips against hers. No, Mr. Foster, let go! Jade struggled. If she'd held still, she would be fine. But the movement brought her lower body right up against his... She could feel him against her, hot and hard. A wave of heat swept through her. She felt mingled excitement and fear. Do you really want to let me go? Dara's voice was slightly hoarse. Jade loved that she had damaged his composure. She thought of the last time they shared a bed, at the hotel. He let her sleep right on top of him because the bed was too small. At this memory, Jade couldn't help but kiss him. At first, it was just a slow kiss. Then it got more intense. Dario thrust his tongue into her mouth and made a sound that was almost a growl. Jade felt herself melting. She squeezed her eyes shut and stroked her tongue against Dario's. She could do this forever. What if she could just stay with him? How amazing would that be? After kissing her for a long time, Dario pulled back. Let's sleep, it's very late. He turned off the lamp, snuggled up against her, and patted her on the back. Jade was very sleepy, but she couldn't sleep. All of this was like a dream. When she woke up, she would still be alone in that hotel. She'd been alone for over 20 years. Logically speaking, she should be used to it. But now that she'd had a taste of life with Dario Foster, she never wanted to go back to solitude. Are you still awake? Dario's sleepy voice came from beside her ear. Do you want to watch the sunrise? Actually, Jay couldn't help but ask. How can you sleep like that? Aren't you uncomfortable? Like what? In answer... Jade pushed her hip against his hardness. Dario drew in a breath. 
she did it again. She wasn't very familiar with the male body, although of course she knew about its general construction and functions. She wanted to learn. Daria hugged Jade harder. He asked in a low voice, You want to solve my problem for me? Episode 132. Together, yet separate. How can I solve your problem? Jade asked softly. She regretted it the moment she said it. Dario's low voice buzzed against her ear. Do you really want to know? Against her hip, she felt a twitch. Now she realized what he meant. Never mind, Jade said firmly. Forget what I asked. Then close your eyes and go to sleep like a good girl. He smacked her butt. After that, Jade heard his breathing become slower and more steady. He seemed to have really gone to sleep, but the hardness against her lower body was still there. Did it have a life of its own, completely separate from his brain? Could he really sleep like this? In the dim moonlight, she studied his handsome face. He made her feel as if something had been knocked over in her heart. They'd been up so late and Jade was so exhausted from filming Decadent Lady that she actually slept until noon. This wasn't at all like her, but it saved money on breakfast, she supposed. As Jade was waking up, she stretched out her hand beside her. Instead of the usual cool, empty sheets, her hand rested on a warm body. What a wonderful feeling. It was very warm, soft on the surface, but hard overall. Something furry brushed her fingertips. She snatched her hand away as if out of a fire. Please let him still be asleep, she thought. Please let him not notice. But when she looked up, she saw his eyes, intent on her and the strange smile on his face. She was mortified. Good morning, Mr. Foster, she chirped with artificial brightness. I'll just get up and... Before she could even sit up, Dario yanked her into his arms. His voice was cool and languid. Have you touched enough? Jade could feel herself blushing, but she pretended nothing had happened. What do you mean? I was just seeing if you were still in bed. Seems like I've been sleeping through some things. Do you often fill me up when I'm asleep? Hmm? Dario said in a low voice. He put a hand on her waist and nipped lightly at her earlobe. The sensation zapped through her and left heat in the pit of her stomach. Jade shook her head and shrank away from him. She hadn't been awake long enough for this. Dario never slept this late. Running back and forth for the last couple of weeks had worn him out. He hadn't slept well the whole time. Lying there with her in his arms, he felt at rest. You're the one who touches people when they're sleeping, Jade pointed out, resisting the urge to knee him. Dario frowned. I thought you knew, I thought you liked it. Jade's face turned red. She hurriedly pushed him away. So those really hadn't been dreams. Jade immediately got out of bed and found a set of clothes. She said, Dario, I want to see my grandma today. I haven't had a chance in a long time. She did want to be with Dario, but if she went to see her grandmother first, she could give him her undivided attention later. I'll take you there. Let's go out to eat first. Dario also got up and started getting dressed. Jade did not dare to look at him at all, but Dario was oblivious. He kept walking in front of her as if he was showing off his body on purpose. Oh no, that's okay, it's already so late, you need to get to work. Jade didn't want to delay him, but when she saw his persistent gaze, she didn't want to reject him either. She could only follow him out of the apartment. It made sense to go out and eat because it was so late to start their day. Strangely though, Jade had found the kitchen spotless when she arrived. Not freshly cleaned, but unused. There were no ingredients. Could it be that he hadn't cooked at home the whole time she was gone? After they had lunch, Dario drove Jade to the hospital. On the way, the two of them were very quiet. Dario kept his eyes on the road ahead. Jade sat silently beside him, not knowing what to say. She had a lot she wanted to say after their time apart, but where could she even begin? Even after last night's events, Jade still felt a chasm between the two of them. It was as if she would never be able to assimilate into his world. Getting closer to him physically wasn't going to help either. There was so much about him she didn't know. When they arrived at the hospital, Jade took a breath. She did not get out of the car immediately. Instead, she looked at his peerlessly beautiful face and said softly, If you have something to do, go do it. I'll sleep in the hospital with my grandma tonight. Daria looked at her and then bent down to unbuckle her seatbelt. Then... As if she hadn't spoken at all, he said firmly, I will pick you up after work. Episode 133, Jade Loses Her Temper. 
Jade was stunned for a moment. Maybe Dario hadn't heard what she said. She said it again. Mr. Foster, I said I want to stay in the hospital with my grandma. It's rare for me to have a vacation. When it's over, I'll return to the set. She didn't expect Dario to say sternly, No, you can stay here during the day, but you need to come back to sleep at night. Jade only wanted to spend the night with her grandmother and join Dario tomorrow. She didn't expect this level of rigidity from him. She could not help but tremble in her heart. Was she just his teddy bear? Was he unwilling to sleep alone for even one more night? She thought of him hugging that woman at the airport. Jade felt a surge of anger. For the first time, she really lost her temper with him. Mr. Foster, are you even listening to me? I said I want to stay here with Grandma tonight. If you just need a girl to warm up your bed, I'm sure you can find someone. Probably a few at once. The more Jade spoke, the louder she became. The atmosphere turned freezing cold. Jade looked at Dario and was terrified for a moment. She reached for the door handle. He stopped her. She turned around and met the gaze of those cold eyes. There was no expression on the rest of his face, but those eyes blazed cold as if he were going to freeze her into an ice sculpture. Jade tried to take back her hand from him but found that she couldn't move. Mr. Foster, she said. Come on, I need to go. His grip didn't relax. Jade said with some fear. I was just spouting nonsense. Just pretend you didn't hear me. This kind of diary made her feel helpless. Dario's dark eyes seemed to want to see through her. Jade, I'll tell you one last time. You are the only woman I want. Do you understand? Dario looked into her eyes. His eyes were a bit softer than before. He kept getting closer to Jade and pressed her onto the passenger seat. Jade pushed his body and turned her head to the side. She could feel breath on her face. Was he still angry? Was he going to kiss her? She hated that she couldn't tell. He was always like this. He always spoke to her in a commanding tone, like she was his servant rather than his wife. But hearing him say that she was the only woman for him still got to her. Her heart began to stir again. Mr. Foster, I'm really going now. Let go of me. Jade put her free hand on the button to open the door. Do you want me to go to the hospital with you? Dara asked calmly. He didn't intend to let go of Jade. He didn't want her to leave him. He gently touched her pretty face as if he was touching a treasure something priceless and breakable. No, no thanks. You still have your own things to do. Jade lowered her head to avoid looking him in the eyes. She still saw the coldness take over that handsome and threatening face. Jade opened the car door and was about to get out when Dario reached over and slid a pair of black sunglasses onto her face. Mr. Foster, what are you doing? I don't like this. Jade had never liked wearing sunglasses. Dario did not explain anything. He just said, put it on. This is my gift to you. You can take it back when you're in your room. I will come to pick you up after dinner, okay? Although his tone had softened a little, his attitude was still firm. Jay just frowned and said unhappily, I'm going in. Drive safe, okay? She turned around and left. Dario did not leave immediately. He parked the car and waited quietly until he could not see Jade any longer. He frowned slightly and pursed his lips. Was she blaming him for teasing her yesterday? Has something happened to make her jealous? She was cute when she was angry, and still kind, reminding him to be careful on the road. But he didn't know what she was thinking about. It must be because she was so tired from filming. He was still brooding about the visit to the class. She thought he didn't know anything, but Caroline had told her everything. She said that she would ask whether anyone had called or texted. She was obviously waiting for him. Silly Jade. Yesterday, she had that provocative look on her face. How could he resist touching her? He only wanted her to be rested before they got into more strenuous exercise. When he thought about how she was shy under him yesterday and wanted him to be gentle, he couldn't help but smile. The first time, Jade, don't worry. In the future, you will be with me for all your first times. Dare turned the key in the ignition and drove away. As Jade walked down the hallway of the hospital, she felt silly. Dare had asked her to wear sunglasses and for some reason... She was willing to listen to him, even though she didn't like them. So here she was, wearing sunglasses in broad daylight inside the hospital. At first, she felt like someone was looking at her. As she walked, she drew more and more glances. Then she heard a girl's voice behind her. Hey, 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 don't you think that girl wearing sunglasses looks familiar? Another voice responded. I know where I've seen her, that shampoo commercial. Episode 134, Hospital Visitors. 
The three girls in the hospital hallway put their heads together and giggled. One of them said, Now that you mention it, it really does look like her. Her name is Jade, right? That shampoo ad is everywhere. Jade looked back at the girls curiously. Were they really talking about her? But why would a celebrity just be walking around here by herself? Another one of the girls argued. She probably just looks like Jade Winslet. Then the girls noticed Jade looking over at them. She looked over. Wow, she looks so good. Look at her long legs. Should we take a picture with her? Forget it. It's definitely not her. Why would she be here? She's still looking at us. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. They scurried down the hallway, giggling. Jade watched them go, wondering. She looked like a celebrity? A celebrity named Jade? This was so weird. She shook her head to clear it. She was here to see Grandma, not eavesdrop on random girls. The moment she walked into her grandmother's ward, a wave of coldness swept through her heart. There were two uninvited guests in the ward. It was her aunt Suzanne and cousin Ivana. What were they doing here? For an instant, they didn't seem to recognize Jade. She'd been given a new hairstyle on the set of Decadent Lady. She wore the black sunglasses Daru had forced onto her face and a full outfit of designer clothes that Daru had bought her. She carried a limited edition Louis Vuitton bag. Ivana realized that this was her cousin and was flooded with envy. The clothes and the bag didn't look like knockoffs. What was Jade doing with such expensive things? Jade, I didn't recognize you in nice clothes. Ivana delivered this backhanded compliment with perfect sweetness. Jade ignored this. She looked at them indifferently and asked, what are you doing here? She should ask how they knew her grandmother was here. Logically speaking, after grandma changed places, only Jade knew about it. They must have badgered the hospital into telling them she was there. There were no good people in the Winslet family. She had to be on her guard. What do you mean? We came to see Grandma Iris. Ivana rolled her eyes at her. She doesn't need to see you, Jade snapped. These people had threatened her with surgery fees and tried to force her to marry an old man. Now they have the nerve to show up in her grandma's room? Suzanne just stood to the side and did not say anything. Jade was surprised. This did not seem like her aunt. If she'd seen Jade dressed like this in the past, she would have made fun of her. But now she didn't say a word. This made Jade even more curious. What was she trying to do? When she looked at Suzanne carefully, she saw that her clothes were very different from her usual style. They were expensive, of course, but very conservative. She had a large silk scarf slung around her neck as though she wanted to be ready to cover her face at any moment. It was probably because of her recent experiences with the media. When she went out, she had to be fully armed. Ivana was about to say something when Suzanne said quietly, Honey, let's go. They turned to walk out of the ward. Jay couldn't wait for them to be gone. But Ivana appeared in the doorway again. She stretched out her hand languidly, showing off the sparkle of her diamond ring. Clearly, Ivana hadn't forgotten that Jay didn't even have a wedding ring when she said she was married. Ivana looked at Jade arrogantly. I almost forgot to tell you. Bruce and I got our marriage certificate. You'll have to come to our wedding. She clearly wanted to upset Jade but Jade didn't feel anything. She had loved Bruce once. At one time, this news would have destroyed her. But now, she had Dario. Even if Bruce hadn't dumped her, twice, and had been part of a vicious crime against her, she would be done with him. He wasn't a man. He was a beast. Jade calmly took off her sunglasses and revealed her beautiful face. She smiled at Ivana. Oh, then congratulations to you guys. Is your husband out of prison now? Attempted rape is kind of a big deal, isn't it? Ivana's expression changed. Clearly, she knew about this already. In fact, she and Bruce had had a big fight about this. She hated that Jade knew about it too. Ivana glared at her poor, insignificant cousin. Jade, what the fuck are you talking about? That was just a rumor. Leave my husband alone. Jade gave a cold laugh. Just a rumor? Go ask your hubby about that. She stepped forward and closed the door in Ivana's face. Jade leaned against the door of the ward, slightly enjoying the muffled shouting coming from the other side. She did feel a little bad for Ivana. Jade knew how charming Bruce could be and how well he hid the monster inside him. He could easily trick a wiser person than Ivana into loving and defending him. It occurred to Jade that Ivana's belly looked just the same as usual. She wondered if the pregnancy was a lie. She shook her head. It didn't matter. Bruce and Ivana were of no concern to her. She just needed to do her own thing. 
Episode 135, Jealousy. Ivana clenched her fists and stared at the hospital hallway. She wanted to anger her cousin and see her in pain. Instead, Jade was indifferent. Not only did she not feel the slightest bit of sadness, she even said that Ivana's husband almost went to prison. What rape attempt. What a load of bullshit. Bruce would never do that. He was a good man. He only loved Ivana and would never go after another woman. It was all a rumour. People were trying to set him up, that was all. He'd said so the other day. It was all fake. Someone had gotten him drunk. Those women had tried to seduce him. He was so handsome and so rich, of course there would be some leeches. Ivana was used to it. She liked that other women wanted him. It showed that she had good taste and that she had defeated them. Suzanne was already halfway down the corridor without her. Ivana might actually be most angry with her mother, who didn't say a word to Jade the whole time. She chased after her, teetering on her stiletto heels. She caught up with Suzanne at the door. Mum, what's wrong with you? You didn't defend me. You didn't say anything at all. What are you scared of Jade now because she's in a shampoo commercial? Ivana's tone was cutting. She was angry and sad. She and Bruce were planning a wedding. She didn't need any additional problems right now. She didn't want Jade to cause trouble. That was why Ivana made a special trip to tell her about this, so she could control the scene. It was just that she didn't expect Jade to not care at all. Suzanne saw how angry her daughter was and was afraid that others would recognize them. She pulled her scarf up over her face and coldly said, let's talk in the car. As their driver navigated the car out of the hospital parking lot, Ivana stared at the hospital with eyes full of hate. When she thought of Jade's advertisement, she seethed more intensely. She didn't expect her cousin to actually become famous. It was just a shampoo ad. Who gets famous for being in a shampoo ad? When Ivana saw Jade in her expensive clothes and dark sunglasses like a movie star at a festival, she was so jealous that she thought she might explode. Jade was nobody. How could she afford those clothes? What right did she have to be better dressed than Ivana? Ivana had been a little princess her whole life, with Jade following behind her, wearing her cast-offs when she was lucky enough to get them. Jade could not be allowed to get ahead of her in life. Once they were in the car, Suzanne took off her scarf. She said coldly, So, Jade isn't such a nice girl after all. Who do you think she had to screw to get cast in that commercial? Why would I suck up to someone like that? Seeing her mother return to her usual self, Ivana had nothing more to say. There was a trace of a smile on her face. Mother, you're right, Ivana agreed. Jade has got to be sleeping her way to the top. It's so unfair to all the girls who work hard and have talent. But hey, she probably won't last long. She laughed a mean laugh. She'll be begging to play a dead body on cop shows soon. Ivana and Suzanne knew they weren't people to be messed with. They both smiled. Jade's grandmother was probably going crazy from anger now. Before Jade had arrived in the ward, Ivana had told Grandma Iris just how rich her granddaughter was. She said Jade would move her grandmother to a private VIP room and pay all her medical bills. Ivana also hinted that Jade had gotten both her money and her acting jobs by sleeping with powerful men. This goddamn old lady had spent so much of their family's money on medical bills. Now, she could be Jade's problem. In the ward, Nurse Mason was trying to comfort Jade's grandmother. When the nurse saw Jade come over, she immediately told her what happened. Jade was furious. She couldn't believe her poisonous cousin and aunt had said all this to an old woman in the hospital. Then again, maybe it wasn't that surprising. But if she'd known earlier, she wouldn't have let them off so easily. Fortunately, her grandmother didn't believe a word of it. This warmed Jade's heart through and through. The person who treated her the best in this world had always been her grandmother. Now there was Dario too. She knew that in the acting industry, there was always going to be misunderstandings. It was enough for her to know that she was innocent. She was going to pursue her dreams no matter what other people thought. All right, Grandma, they're gone. Don't pay them any attention. They're just trying to make you mad. Jade smiled at her grandma. So if you get mad, don't they win? Grandma Iris smiled back at her. Jade realized she had to have a talk with the hospital administration. She hoped that if Ivana and Suzanne came back, she could have them chased out before they could disturb her grandmother. Grandma Iris was too excited now her breath coming quick and rough. Jade took a deep breath to calm herself down so she could comfort her grandmother. She had left Washington for only a couple of weeks and her grandmother's condition had improved drastically. She was recovering well from the surgery. If nothing unexpected happened, she should be able to be discharged very soon. 
Grandma Iris took Jade's hand. I am so angry. Those two women deliberately came to bother me. Jade, sweetheart, I don't believe a word. Grandma knows you've always been a good girl. She squeezed her hand. Grandma, if you believe me, that's enough. I don't care about anyone else. Now you should get some rest. You shouldn't waste your energy on being mad at those horrible women. Jade kissed her on the cheek and carefully helped her lie down under the blanket. When Grandma Iris was falling asleep, the nurse pulled Jade to the side. Your aunt is really something, she said. I'm so sorry they got in here. Don't worry. Next time, I'll have them thrown out. There was guilt in her eyes. Episode 136 Nurse Mason's Philosophy of Marriage Jade knew the nurse was a good person. She patted her back to comfort her. Nurse Mason, it's fine, I don't blame you. They're awful people. Anyway, they're gone now. Nurse Mason looked at her and then looked at the door. Jade, didn't your husband come with you? Jade felt slightly embarrassed, as though she'd left Dario behind on a bus. Mr. Foster had to go to work. I didn't ask him to come with me. Jade kept her voice low so she wouldn't disturb her grandma. Nurse Mason looked at her worriedly. Honey, what's going on? Are you really calling your husband Mr. Foster? Here she affected a pompous voice and made air quotes with her fingers. Why are you acting like an outsider in your own marriage? I've always called him that, Jade said meekly. I don't see the problem. Maybe it was unusual that she didn't call her husband by his first name, but she called him that from the beginning and it felt normal to her. Dario didn't seem to mind. She did think of him as Dario, but calling him that out loud felt strange. He'd made her do it once, but never again. Nurse Mason lowered her voice again. Did you do what I told you? What? The nurse rolled her eyes. You know, did you seal the deal yet? Seal the... Jade remembered now. Oh! Jade did not know what to say for a moment. Then she decided to tell a version of the truth. I've been filming outside the city, so we haven't had a chance to have sex. She felt her face glowing red. The nurse made a dismissive gesture. How long do you think it takes? She patted Jade's hand. Honey, take her from someone who's seen a lot in life. You've got to work to keep a guy like that. Rich people are used to getting what they want. If he thinks he made a bad choice marrying you, you'll be gone like that. On that last word, she snapped her fingers. Tonight, you're going to give him the night of his life. Tonight, I'm planning to stay here with Grandma. Jade wanted to dig a hole and climb into it. She was too shy for this conversation. The nurse waved her hand. No, 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 no. I'll take care of her at night. You have more important things to do with your time off from filming. Nurse Mason turned to check on Grandma Iris, but turned back to Jade right away. If you're planning on kids, the sooner the better. Either you make a big, beautiful, rich family, or you lock down some child support. Jade stared at her. Nurse Mason was a kind woman, but ruthlessly practical, it seemed. Okay, Jade said cautiously. I understand. Thanks for taking such good care of Grandma. She left the ward quickly, before she could be given any more advice. Apparently, even though she wanted to stay at the hospital, no one was going to let her. Jade fell into deep thought. Daria had mentioned children before, but she blew him off. She imagined, for a minute, a lively family, a warm and welcoming home. Was that what Daria wanted them to have together? What did she want? Her phone rang, startling her. She expected it to be Daria, but the screen read, Violet. She picked up the phone without saying anything. A very excited voice spilled from the phone. Hey, superstar, you're finally willing to take my call. Superstar? Are you too famous for your friends now? And after everything we've been through together, Mr. Yao's drama class and the silly putty and that time you found that toad in your box lunch? All forgotten now that you're a big star. Violet was laughing, but her tone was sharp. She said this all so quickly that Jade couldn't digest the content, only the sound. Violet? Jade finally interrupted. What on earth are you talking about? You've been ignoring me. Jade frowned. Have you been trying to get in touch with me? Of course I have. I texted, I snapchatted, I sent you that TikTok with the drunk giraffe. Violet's tone became more and more annoyed as she spoke. Jade blinked. Oh, I've been filming on location. I'm either working or sleeping and the place has terrible internet. I couldn't check my social media even if I had time. I did see you called before and I forgot to call you back. I'm sorry. Episode 137 
Encounter with old friends. When Violet responded, her anger seemed to be ebbing. It's okay, superstar, I get that you're really busy. Violet calling her a superstar was getting annoying. Jade couldn't help but ask, Why are you making fun of me? I'm not a star. Jade, you're so modest. I love that about you. Do you remember what I told you last time? When you're famous, you should hire me as your assistant. Well, you're famous now, Violet said excitedly. I'm here to serve and to take selfies with you and maybe pick up some roles you don't have time for. Her voice was full of laughter. Violet, what are you talking about? There was a long pause. Jade, do you really not know? Are you pretending? Jade was starting to be exacerbated. Know what? Oh my God, said Violet. You're famous and you have no idea. Jade's day was just getting stranger and stranger. Why am I famous? So you haven't been online much recently? No, not at all. Jade shook her head and helplessly said, How would I have the time? I go right from shooting and pass out because I'm so tired. I barely even touch my phone. No wonder. Okay, you need to do some research on yourself. Violet laughed out loud. Just spend half an hour with your phone. You're trending on Twitter. Your ads are absolutely everywhere. Everyone I know is sharing them. And the ones that aren't are complaining that they're sick of them. Jade was stunned. My shampoo ads? How are they such a big deal? People keep saying you're like the beauty of the century. Something about having a mathematically perfect face? It's wild, huh? The more Violet spoke, the more excited she became. She had always thought Jade was beautiful, that she'd definitely become famous someday. Maybe not quite this fast, though. Jade felt like she was made of stone. Like she would be frozen forever with her mouth hanging open and her brow furrowed. This was an unexpected development, to say the least. Oh, wow, was all she said. Seriously, said Violet. Check your socials, maybe turn on the TV. Jade said doubtfully. All right then, I'll take a look when I have time. She thought back to the girls she heard talking inside the hospital. It seemed they really were talking about her, not some other person named Jade. Clearly, she'd been too cut off from the world recently. After talking to Nurse Mason, Jade still planned to go back, but she didn't want to trouble Dario. She decided to go by herself, then tell him where she was once she arrived. However, just as she was about to walk to the bus station, she saw a familiar Land Rover. The window was open. She could clearly see the person behind the wheel. Jade's heart, already a bit sore, flooded with anger. The person was Bruce. She'd just been talking about him with his new wife, Ivana. This was entirely too much Bruce for one day, or for one lifetime. The door of the Land Rover opened. Bruce got out and walked toward her. Jade immediately turned around to leave. She wanted to run back to the hospital, where at least it was safe. But her high heels slowed her down and Bruce caught up with her. His face was full of hostility. He stared at her fiercely. When she took a step back, he grabbed her arm. His face too close to hers, he said with an icy expression, Jade, why did you leave when you saw me? Are you scared of me? A sharp pain shot through her arm. She clenched her teeth and endured it. She tried to step on his foot, but he knocked her shoe aside. Stay away from me, Jade snapped. Bruce narrowed his eyes. You're getting pretty cocky these days. Let me tell you, you don't want to piss me off. Jade looked at him indifferently. Or what? Or you'll be in major trouble. She raised her eyebrows and smiled faintly. Is that so? Who exactly is in trouble? You just came out of jail and it seems like you're dying to go back. Bruce's expression tightened with sullen fury. You bitch. Do you have a death wish? Jade looked at him coldly. The only person who should die is you. Her eyes were full of disdain and disgust. Stay away from me. I never want to see you again. She tried to jerk her arm out of his grasp. Take your dirty hands off me. You don't have the right to touch me. Bruce's anger was pierced with a spear of sadness. Jade's expression hurt him. She was like a stranger to him. In the past, she would only circle around him. Her eyes and voice and words were always gentle. He thought she was gentle and meek all the way through. He would never have imagined her speaking to him like this. Now every word she said dripped with disdain. Her eyes were full of hatred. She did not want him to touch her. This had to be because of that man. He had snatched away the love that belonged to Bruce. Jade, watch your mouth. You got lucky last time, Bruce said as he increased the strength in his hands. You don't want to know what's going to happen when I have you to myself again. Jade looked around frantically. 
her anger drowning in fear. Just as she was about to call for help, a familiar deep voice came from behind her. I'd like to have you to myself, Bruce Stevens. The voice filled Jade with joy and relief. She turned her head anxiously. Her gaze softened a little when it landed on him. Mr. Foster, you came. She wanted to run up to him, but Bruce refused to let go of her arm. Jade frowned and turned back to Bruce. Her tone was steely with fury. Let go of me. My husband is here now. When she said the word husband, the two men's eyes suddenly changed. Bruce's eyes were full of jealousy and anger, and Daria's eyes were full of rare joy and depth. When Bruce saw the huge difference in her attitude toward him and Dario, his heart clenched with a strange feeling. Was it rage? Was it grief? Episode 138 Thank you, Opalise Shampoo Bruce felt a dull, uncomfortable feeling in his chest. He was very angry. He had already lost to Dario Foster twice in a row. Dario's sharp gaze stopped on Jade's arm. Bruce, my friend, he said with deadly coolness. Bad news about your hand. It's going to be crippled. Bruce looked at those eagle-like eyes. His hands began to tremble. He hadn't forgotten how Dario had walked behind him the last time and knocked him down. Bruce narrowed his eyes and held Jade's arm tighter, but then he unhappily let go of her. He didn't want a broken hand. Dario saw that he knew what to do and did not say anything further. He ignored Bruce. His gaze was always on Jade. He walked forward and swept Jade into his arms. It was as if he were announcing his sovereignty. Only he could touch this woman. Bruce looked at his empty hands. For a moment, he was distracted. He felt a little empty in his heart, too. Dario tidied the hair on Jade's forehead. Their disagreement from earlier in the day was forgotten. His tone was gentle. Why didn't you ask me to pick you up? Jade lowered her head. When she spoke, her voice was almost normal. I thought you'd be too busy, and I can go by myself perfectly well. She glanced at Bruce dismissively. I didn't realize this neighborhood was infested with vermin. She took the initiative to embrace his strong body and lean into his solid warmth. Jade realized that when she saw Bruce, she wasn't afraid. Not really, because she had a feeling. A feeling that Dario would appear to save her. Bruce could only stand there seething internally and watch them sweetly hug each other. Their eyes were filled with love. Bruce had been with Jade for five years without ever seeing such a look in her eyes. Mr. Foster, why didn't you tell me when you got off work? Jade looked up and frowned slightly, as if reprimanding him. Daria looked at her soft lips and kissed them. He said with a purr in his voice, Don't you like the way I suddenly appear? Of course I do, I just didn't expect you to be here. Jade turned her face from his. She didn't want to kiss him in public, where others could watch and recognize them. Kissing was a private thing to her. The moment Dario appeared, it was like Bruce wasn't even a person to them. Watching the two of them hugging and kiss him made him want to kick something. Have you had dinner? Are you hungry? Dario touched Jade's stomach as if there were no one else around. He had a sudden vision of the surface under his hand growing round and tight with another life. I haven't eaten yet. Grandma fell asleep and I didn't eat in the hospital. More importantly, Dario's cooking was much better than the hospital food. Jade didn't say this out loud, though. She had missed Dario's food very much while on set. The food provided to the actors was delicious, but it wasn't the same. I knew you didn't eat. I already got the groceries. Let's go. Dario held her hand as he walked. He looked like he was holding a child's hand. He opened the car door for her, put on the seatbelt, and kissed her mouth. Then he walked to the driver's seat. Bruce stood where he was and clenched his fists. Only when their car drove away did he leave in anger. He was very angry when he saw them. He did not know why he felt his heart ache. When they got home, Daria asked her to sit on the sofa and wait. He didn't want her to help. Soon, the smell of food came from the kitchen. The house was not as cold as when Jade came back yesterday. It smelled like sautéing onions and garlic. With someone cooking in it, the house felt alive. Jade sat in the living room, feeling a little bored. The incident with Bruce had distracted her, but now she remembered that astonishing conversation with Violet. She turned on her phone and picked up the Wi-Fi. On her browser homepage, there was a picture of her. This was one of the strangest days of her entire life. Jade clicked on the picture. It took her to a video clip of her commercial for Obelisk Shampoo, which didn't surprise her. What did surprise her was that it had 5 million views and many thousands of comments. Clicking on a couple of comments and links, she was surprised to learn that Obelisk was no ordinary shampoo. 
one bottle cost hundreds of dollars. It was used by many huge stars and in all the high-end salons that normal people couldn't even get appointments in. Jade had no idea. She thought it cost a little more than her usual shampoo since it had such a nice bottle. Maybe it cost $7 or $8. She was given so many free bottles of Obelisk when she filmed the commercial. She only kept one. The others she gave to actors and crew members who were nice to her. Now she understood why they seemed so surprised and why they kept asking her if she was sure she wanted to give them the shampoo. Jade was still thinking, isn't it just a bottle of shampoo? Why are they so happy? Now she finally knew. She turned on the TV again, only to see herself on the screen. The commercial seemed to be everywhere. Hesitatingly, she scrolled through some of the comments on the video. Most people were raving about her beauty, although some were being indecent about it. Others complained about the price of the shampoo or advertised their rap albums. But mostly, the commentators were in agreement. The Obelisk shampoo girl was the next big thing. Jade rubbed her eyes hard. She couldn't believe this. She opened her mouth wide and ran to the kitchen with her phone. She looked at Daru. She was too excited to speak. She wanted to share her joy with this man as soon as possible. Mr. Foster. Dario, who was dicing a tomato with surgical precision, looked up and asked, What's wrong? Are you hungry? No. Mr. Foster, look, there are pictures of me all over the internet. My commercial has millions of views. This is unbelievable. Jade was so excited that she bounced a little. This wasn't her first acting job, but it was the first one that seemed to take up any space in the world. In her past roles, her scenes were fleeting. This advertisement could become part of the culture for a long time. Episode 139. Call Me By My Name. Jade was so excited about her newfound fame. However, Dari didn't show any surprise. He seemed very calm. He just continued chopping the tomato in silence. Jade thought he didn't care about the news. Then she considered the matter. Even Violet knew. Dario definitely had known about this all along. That must have been why he forced her to wear sunglasses today. He was afraid she would be recognised and cause trouble. He was right too. The girls at the hospital recognised her right away. Jade put her hands on her hips and asked him unhappily, You already knew? Dario just nodded. Of course he had seen it. He'd seen the original immediately. In the past weeks, he'd watched it so many times that he remembered every line she said, every movement she made, every expression on her face. He had it saved on his phone in a secret video app that looked like accounting software. You know about this? Violet knows about this. My manager must also know about this. Everyone knows about me, but me. Jade made a big, angry hand gesture. What's wrong with you people? Why did no one tell me? You knew I didn't have Wi-Fi and you didn't think to give me a quick update? Jade pouted. Who's Violet? Dari asked, distracted. Then he slid the diced tomato into the sizzling pan on the stove, wiped his hands on a dish towel, and turned to hug her. I didn't tell you, because I wanted you to discover it yourself. I thought that would make you happier. Hearing his serious explanation, Jade was speechless. After careful consideration, she guessed it did make a kind of sense. If he told her from the beginning, she would be very happy. But she certainly wouldn't be this surprised. She really didn't expect a shampoo commercial to be the thing that made her famous. Naturally, she did not know that Millican Agency had used many channels and spent a lot of money to promote the commercial. Dario touched her face, bringing her back to herself. We will be able to eat soon. Jade inhaled the scent of the food cooking and her mouth watered. Mr. Foster, I'll set the table. You sit in the living room. Jade felt embarrassed to have him cooking for her again. He had already done so much for her. Tomorrow, she wanted to cook for him. No rush. The soup needs to simmer for the flavours to meld. The two of them cuddled on the sofa. On TV, a couple on a similar sofa was kissing hungrily. Jade scooted away from Dario, who pulled her into his lap. Mr. Foster, it's time for dinner. Jade looked at the TV screen out of the corner of her eye. The man on the sofa was pulling off his shirt, revealing abs nearly as nice as Dario's. Can we watch something else? She asked. She felt uncomfortable sitting on Dario's lap while the couple on TV began to have sex. Dario held her tightly in his arms. His voice was low and hoarse. I don't care about dinner. I want you. Jade's mouth was dry. What do you want from me? I want you to say my name. Otherwise, I won't let you go. Dario raised his eyebrows slightly, his eyes burning with passion. Jade wanted to open her mouth, but she could not say it. It felt too intimate to say to him. Are you not going to say it? 
Do you really want me to hold you here forever? Dario moved his lips closer as he spoke, as if to kiss her. Jade's heart kept beating. She tried to open her mouth again. Mr. Foster, she said. I can't. I can't say it. She shyly covered her face. Dario had a disappointed look. All right, I understand what you mean. Jade was stunned for a moment. She thought he would kiss her forcefully as usual, but this time, he did not. He put her down and went back into the kitchen. Jade sat on the sofa and pursed her lips. She felt a little disappointed. She looked uneasily at Dario in the kitchen, waiting to see his expression. But as usual, she couldn't detect any emotion on his face. She didn't know if he was angry. Come and eat, Dario said. I'm coming. When Jade arrived, she found the table all set. She did not need to do anything. When she sat down, Dario lowered his head and started to eat the soup without saying a word. He had just said that he understood. What did he mean? Did he really understand? Did he misunderstand something? She wanted to explain, but she didn't know how. She was used to calling him Mr. Foster. Would it really be like what Nurse Mason said? If she kept calling him that, would they stay distant from each other? Would he mind it? He always called her Jade. If she called him Mr. Foster, did this show an imbalance in their relationship? After dinner, Jade was about to clean up the dishes when Daria began to do it instead. He said lightly, You go and rest. Mr. Foster, let me wash the dishes. You should be tired after cooking. Jade had just finished speaking when she saw Dario's determined look. She knew she could not stop him from doing what he wanted to do. She could only go to the living room to watch TV. About half an hour later, Dario finished cleaning up. He went to the study without saying a word. Jade sat alone in the hall. Jade looked at the tightly shut door of the study room. Her heart was unhappy. The TV was still on, but she didn't know what was playing. She sat for a while and sighed. She chose a conservative nightgown, took a bath, and studied her lines while sitting on the bed. It was already 10 o'clock, but Dario had not come back. She felt like Dario did not want to bother with her recently. When she was away, she always sent him messages, but he rarely sent her any. He had only visited once, and she didn't know any of what he'd been up to. He didn't care about her feelings at all. Episode 140 Help Me Take Off My Clothes Even when he ate, he was so cold. When she thought about these things, she felt very uncomfortable. Jade angrily tossed aside the script in her hands and said to herself, I don't want to think about these things. I want to sleep. But when she turned off the lights and lay on the bed, trying to close her eyes, she found that she could not sleep no matter what. She touched the cold and empty bedsheet beside her, feeling a sense of loss. Could it be that she could not sleep without him? Impossible, she thought. It must be because she woke up too late this morning. It couldn't be that she wasn't able to sleep without Dario by her side. When she was in the crew, she was able to sleep alone. But even when she closed her eyes and lay there for two hours, she still did not fall asleep. And Dario didn't come back either. She angrily lifted the blanket and said to herself, Jade Winslet, you are really useless. However, she was conflicted in her heart. She turned on the light again and carefully walked towards the study. She had thought that Dario had locked the door, but he couldn't have. It was still slightly open. She just couldn't see it clearly when she was in the hall before. She hesitatingly pushed the door open and carefully stuck her head in to take a look. Dario was staring intently at the computer screen. He changed into casual clothes and he looked more approachable. He would have already taken a shower. Jay could see that he was busy and she decided to leave quietly. But before she could, Dario stopped what he was doing and turned to see her peeking at him from the door. It's midnight. Don't you want to sleep? Dario asked calmly. Jade stood at the door in a daze. She'd been caught. She hesitated, unsure whether she should tell the truth, but then Dario smiled at her. Do you want me to sleep next to you? He knew what she really thought. Jade blushed instantly, anxiously explaining, No, I've been sleeping for a while. I just got up to use the restroom and saw you. Anything else? Dara asked directly, as if reading her mind. Jade frowned slightly, pulling at her pyjamas. She did not know what to say. Actually, what she really wanted was to ask why he had been so cold to her recently. Did he no longer like her? But standing in front of him, she found she couldn't say anything at all. If she asked him something like that, wouldn't it mean she cared about his feelings toward her? Didn't they agree that they were husband and wife in name only? He had just needed a good-looking wife. What had been going on with her recently? Why did she care about him more and more? She found she really wanted to be with him. No, no, nothing else. I just wanted to see if you were done with your work. If you have something to say, say it. 
Dario said firmly. He obviously knew there was something more. I just want to ask a question. Jade lowered her head. She looked very hesitant. Dario's face stayed calm, as if everything she did was under his control. Wait for me for just a second. Dario finished his work as fast as he could. He turned off the computer and the light in the study. Then he walked over to Jade, who was still standing at the door. He frowned, scolding her. How many times have I told you to wear slippers? If you continue like this, I will break your legs. He suddenly picked her up. Mr. Foster, what are you doing? Afraid that she might fall, Jade reached out to hug Dario's neck. The two of them were suddenly very close. Didn't you want to ask a question? Let's go to bed first. Dario calmly carried her back to the bedroom. Jade looked at him in surprise. She heard how direct he was and instantly became speechless. She thought that what he said about going to bed must only mean lying down on it. He shouldn't mean anything else. But speaking like that, it was very easy to make someone think otherwise. Yesterday, he'd been like that too. She even told him that it was her first time making love. But in the end, he didn't have that much intention at all. He'd only wanted to give a massage because she worried too much. She didn't know why. She really hated feeling like this. Dario carefully carried Jay to the bed and then held her hand to his pants. Jay didn't know what he meant by that. She blinked and naively asked, Mr. Foster, what do you want? I want to make love to you, Dario said plainly. Jade was so scared that she immediately pulled her hand back. He was too forward. She could not help but think of the first time she met him in the bar. It was as if he had said the same thing. Mr. Foster, can you stop talking like that? I'm going to sleep. Good night. Jade immediately hid under the blanket and wrapped herself tightly, as if she was afraid that he would grab her. I'm joking with you. Help me take off my clothes, Dario said in a relaxed manner. However, his expression was very serious. It did not seem like he had been joking. As he spoke, he reached for her hand and pulled it out again. Jade looked at him shyly. She did not dare look into his eyes. She rejected him decisively. Mr. Foster, you have your own hands. Why don't you take off your own clothes? If you don't take off my clothes, you won't be able to sleep. Dario emphasized the word sleep. Jade was a little embarrassed. She knew he was saying these words on purpose. He wanted to tease her so she would be even more dissatisfied. Mr. Foster, you are too bad. Jade stared at him angrily. He always bullied her because of his strength. She could not resist at all. I'm not a bad person. Our marriage certificate is still in the drawer. It's very normal for a wife to help a husband take off his clothes. Dario narrowed his eyes and reached for her hand again, but Jade did not want to do it at all. If you want to sleep, do as I say first. Be obedient, Dario said gently. He wanted to lure her into a trap step by step. Jade gave up resisting. No matter what, he always had a way to make her listen to him. Even if she did not help him take off his clothes now, he would still think of other ways to deal with her. Jade gritted her teeth and took the initiative to stretch her hand towards his shirt. In her heart, wanting to help him take off his clothes was a simple matter. She would settle it quickly. Episode 141 He Must Be Angry Jade looked away and reached out her hand to take off Dario's shirt. When her finger accidentally touched his chest, she could clearly feel the motion of his breathing and heat of his skin. Dario looked at her indifferently, staring at the pyjamas she was wearing. He suddenly felt a little thirsty. Although her pyjamas were not too revealing, they were enough to show her good figure. When Jade finally took off Dario's pants, she thought she was free, but Dario did not plan to let her go. He pressed her hand on the edge of his underwear. A low, cruel voice sounded in her ear. There's still one more piece of clothing. Even though it was separated from her by his underwear, she could feel what was inside. Under her palm, it grew bigger and hotter, inch by inch. Jade wanted to withdraw her hand, but Dario refused to let go. She did not dare to look him in the eyes. Her heart beat fast. If you do not help me take off the last piece of clothing, I will not answer your question. Dario leaned close to her ear and said seriously. His eyes became more intense as she touched him. No. Jade retracted her hand and immediately hid in the bed shyly. She exhaled and said, Forget it, Mr. Foster, I don't want to ask. Even though she wanted to know the answer, she really could not do what he wanted. Then you should never ask, he said in a cold voice. 
Jade squeezed her hand into a fist. She did not want to care, but the more she thought about it, the angrier she became. For a moment, she didn't know where her courage came from. She suddenly lifted the blanket and stared at him, seeing red. Mr. Foster, why are you always like this? You don't care about how I feel. I've been in the crew for half a month, yet you don't text me or call me. Every time I contact you first, why are you always like this? You treat me so well all of a sudden, and then you deliberately treat me so coldly. Jade's breath was quick, and her heart was beating constantly after she finished speaking. But she had to finally ask because she could just not take it anymore. Why did he suddenly do something that moved her every time she decided to ignore him? If he were going to keep doing that, then he might as well be cold to her from the start. His behavior made her heart very confused. She felt like she would go crazy if this continued. Dario did not answer her question. Instead, he asked in a very calm tone, I am very good to you, aren't I? Although Dario had guessed that Jade would be angry, he did not expect her to be so emotional. When she heard him say this, she immediately choked on her breath and became unable to speak at all. She was shocked he'd even ask such a question and looked at him severely. What did he mean by this? Did he mean that he did not want to be nice to her at all? Did he treat everyone like this? Was he just doing his duty as a husband? Even if it wasn't for her, he would still be like this. Was that so? For a moment, Jade's heart became even more frustrated and disappointed. She looked at him angrily and finally could not help but punch him hard. She started to ramble. Why don't you be nicer to me? If you don't like me and want to be with another woman, I definitely won't stop you. Jade said all the things she held in her heart and the questions she had before. Other women? Dara narrowed his eyes and asked. There was a trace of doubt in his eyes, but he finally realized why Jade was acting so strangely all of a sudden. It seemed that she was jealous. Mr. Foster, you don't need to explain. I saw everything. Jade covered her ears as she spoke. She did not plan to give him any chance to explain. But Dario did not seem to intend to even try. He simply answered, I do not want to explain. Also, what is it that you saw? Jade was stunned. It was as if something was stuck in her throat. It made her feel extremely uncomfortable. Why did he not even try to explain? Was it because there was no need? Nothing. I'm going to sleep. Jade looked at him angrily, especially when she saw the indifference on his face. She was just too sad. You are the only woman I have. Dario pulled her body closer to him. Jade was shocked by his sudden words. Was he expressing his love to her? Still, Jade had concerns, and she could not help but ask, Then why didn't you make love to me yesterday? After all, last time, she was wearing such sexy pyjamas. When Jade said these words, she immediately regretted it. She hurriedly covered her mouth. Damn it! Why did she mention this matter for no reason? Wouldn't this show that she was too lustful? No, this was too embarrassing. She was clearly only thinking about it silently. How could she say it out loud? Impulsiveness was indeed a devil. And this person in front of her was even more devilish than the devil himself. Daria raised his eyebrows and narrowed his eyes. He could not help but reach out his hand to touch her blushing face. Do you look forward to having sex with me? I did not say that. Jade shrank away from him and avoided his hand. She felt almost as if she would be electrocuted if he touched her. This was bad. Everything seemed to be so off. Wasn't she just questioning everything? Why did it seem like their roles had now changed? Do you really not want to? Dario reached out his hand and gently held her delicate chin. He turned her face back to look at the passion in his eyes. Jade lowered her head. Her long eyelashes trembled slightly as if she were afraid of something. I don't want to, Jade replied decisively. Why don't you tell me what you really think? Dario's eyes suddenly darkened with a sense of loss and coldness. This is what I really think. Jade bit her lower lip and answered shakily. She clearly knew that her own true thoughts were otherwise, but she could not say them out loud. Do you have any other questions? Daria asked coldly. Jade grabbed the sheet nervously and took a deep breath. In the end, she shook her head. Then let's sleep. Daria turned off the light and laid down. The room turned dark. Jade sat beside him, feeling uncomfortable. She could not see his expression clearly and did not know if he was angry or not. But looking at him just before, she felt sure he must be angry.
Episode 142. Did he love her? Why was he angry? Jade thought to herself. She was the one who should be angry. In the end, Dario did not answer Jade's question. Jade felt that she had lost control of her heart. She was very uncomfortable. She'd really wanted to know the answer, but now she did not know anything. She couldn't tell how long she sat there for. Dario did not speak to her, nor did he pull her to lie down. He just let her do as she pleased. Eventually, she became tired from sitting. She slowly leaned back and laid down. Dario did not forcefully pull her to his chest as usual. She reached out and touched the cold bed sheet, feeling a sense of loss. Her tears fell uncontrollably. Beside her, she could hear the sound of measured breathing. She thought he must have fallen asleep. She narrowed her eyes and fell asleep in a daze. In her dream, it was as if someone picked up her body and let her lean against something warm. The smell was very familiar to her, and it made her feel at ease. She did not know that the person holding her in the darkness was helpless. His tone was very sad. Why didn't you tell me your answer? He asked. You can be a little bit more willful. You don't have to worry about getting angry. If you do, I will feel how important I am in your heart. When Jade woke up the next day, she felt dizzy. She hadn't slept well, perhaps because she had something on her mind last night. As expected... The person who lay beside her was no longer around. She touched the empty sheet beside her. She didn't know why she felt sad. She stayed in bed for a while before getting up, feeling hungry. After searching for a while, she found that Dario wasn't home. Could it be that he went out to work? Jade walked to the kitchen to see if there was anything to eat. Only then did she realize that there was already oatmeal waiting in a slow cooker. Even better, it was her favorite kind. And the clothes she changed out of yesterday were already hanging on the balcony. Could it be that Dario woke up early to cook and wash her clothes? No, that was too hard to believe. Jade paced around the house in boredom before finally returning to the bedroom. She picked up the phone and stared at it for a long time, but she still did not call him. Then, suddenly remembering, she immediately dialed a number. She had actually forgotten about Faye. Faye took a long time to pick up the phone. When she did... Jade heard her haggard voice. Damn it, Jade. Where have you been for the last two weeks? Didn't you say you wanted to find a house for me? Jade said apologetically. I'm sorry, Faye. I had to suddenly go out of town to film recently. I haven't been to Washington. Where do you live now? Have you found a house? You don't have to worry about it. The company has arranged everything for me. In that case, the company is very good to you. Faye heard Jade's excitement and said angrily, No, the company is not good to me at all. I don't know why the management suddenly gave me so many tasks. Now, not only do I have to write that serial book, I'm also in charge of a bunch of columns. Damn it. I'm so busy that I can't even go out. I don't know how I offended them. They actually said that if I protested, they would take the house back and even deduct my manuscript fees. They are clearly threatening me, and they still don't let me take leave. Oh my God. Faye, why don't you go work at another company? Jade immediately expressed her sympathy. Although filming every day was very tiring, her conditions were still very good. The director would even take the initiative to give her a vacation. Of course I want to go work at another company, but I signed a five-year contract. Only a year has passed. I still have to work here for another four years. If I break the contract, I'll have to pay, Faye said while crying. She really regretted signing the contract. At that time, she was still very young. She didn't know anything. She signed the contract impulsively. They actually lied to her. Who would have thought? I didn't think that writers signed contracts as well. This seemed very familiar to the entertainment industry to Jade. If someone broke their contract, they would have to pay the price. Faye wiped her tears and tried to control her emotions. After she calmed down, she immediately changed the topic. Forget it, Jade. Let's not talk about unhappy things anymore. Tell me about your husband. Is he good to you? He got married so suddenly. Jade could not help but be shocked by Faye's rapid change. Faye had been immersed in sorrow. The next second, she was in gossiping mode. It was just that Jade did not know how to answer Faye's question. If she had asked in the beginning, she would definitely have said that Mr. Foster was very good to her. Really good to her. But he had been so cold toward her recently, like he was deliberately avoiding her. Would it really be like what Sheila said, just because she didn't agree to have sex with him? So was that what it was? He was unhappy. Jade immediately fell into silence. Faye noticed that she did not respond and immediately felt something was not right. She carefully asked, Jade, 
Your husband? He is very good to me, Jade slowly replied. Other than the fact that he had distanced himself from her recently, he was really good to her. Other than her grandmother, he treated her better than anyone in the world. Jade, you two didn't even know each other very long before getting married, right? You're still so young. You haven't even graduated from university. Your suddenly getting married gave me a fright. It was true. They had gotten married as soon as they got to know each other. Jade had never thought that she would be so bold as to marry a man she had only known for a few days. She had never thought that such an outstanding man would marry someone like her. All of this happened too suddenly. Without waiting for Jade to reply, Faye said with her voice full of envy, Jade, I think your husband must be very good to you. He must love you very much. Otherwise, why would you marry him? Jade did not know what to say. Jade thought about it carefully. Did he love her? Without a doubt, he was very good to her. But, she thought, it seemed she had never heard Dario say the word love to her. He also did not say that he liked her. So she felt that there was no love between them. She felt that they were just a couple on the surface. And what's more, she herself had said that there was no need for love. But now, she actually began to want his love. I don't know what to say. Anyway, our story is very hard to believe. I think that even if I told you, you wouldn't believe me. Jade kept recalling the scene of their first meeting. She still felt very awkward about it. How she kept pestering him and wanted to kiss him. Episode 143 Enjoy tonight. Jade had never expected that losing a game would cause her to meet someone who would change her fate. Dario was indeed very good to her. Still, she even felt that if he weren't married to her, he would still be very good to his wife because he was a responsible person. Don't be like this. Jade, tell me. This will give me some inspiration. I will write a book for both of you in the future. Your story can't be the story of that overbearing CEO falling in love with me, can it? Faye seemed especially excited. Faye, you have a lot of imagination, Jade said, smiling helplessly. She could not help but connect the words overbearing CEO to Dario. He was indeed very overbearing and very shameless. The two of them chatted for half an hour. When Faye finally said that she was going to go right, they hung up the phone. Jade calmed down and began to read the script. At noon, Jade noticed that the room was still terrifyingly quiet. She walked back and forth and waited for a while, but Dario still did not appear. Jade looked at the time and saw that it was already past lunchtime. She sighed. She had thought that he would have come back for lunch. Perhaps he did not want to see her and was deliberately staying away. Jade frowned and went to open the refrigerator to see if there was anything to eat. She saw a bowl of sealed pasta in the middle of the refrigerator. It was cooked. She took a look and found that it was actually very fresh. She should be able to eat it after she heated it up. She was a little puzzled. Could it be that Dario had prepared this for her? She took out the plate and found a piece of paper. Written on it were the words, You are now allowed to go out and visit your grandmother, but you have to come back before seven in the evening. You are not allowed to eat dinner out. Jade looked at the familiar handwriting and the tone, feeling both annoyed and amused at the same time. What was this? He wanted to chase her out. He even set a curfew, like she was in elementary school. He was treating her like a baby. He still wanted to force her to come back and sleep there? Hmm, who cares about what you want? Jade stuck her tongue out at the piece of paper and then carefully placed it in her wallet before starting to eat. Just as she finished her meal, Lucas appeared at the door of the house. He said that he had come specifically to bring her to the hospital. Initially, she didn't want to go, but when she saw that there was a ride, she decided not to just sit there for no reason and followed him. Before getting out of the car, Lucas, who always had a poker face, actually smiled. He said to her, Remember to come out on time, 7 o'clock. I'll come to pick you up. Uh, no need. I can get back by myself. Before Jade could finish, Lucas's expression changed. No, this is Mr. Foster's order. After saying that, he immediately left. Jade stayed where she stood when he drove away, feeling a little depressed. She kept feeling like the way Lucas was looking at her just now had been a little strange, as if something were going to happen. Could it be that she was overthinking it? When it was seven o'clock, Jade walked out of the hospital hesitatingly, but by the time she arrived at the door, she was pacing back and forth. She wondered why he asked her to come out then. Why did she have to be so obedient? But Lucas didn't give her a chance to wrestle with her decision. He had already rushed over to welcome her. 
she had never seen such a dedicated driver. When they arrived at the neighborhood, Lucas actually turned back and said something to her seriously. Enjoy tonight. Jade's face was full of confusion. What was going on? What should she enjoy? She thought Dario told her not to eat out because he had prepared dinner. She thought that when she opened the door, she would at most see Dario cooking there as usual. However, when she entered the passcode and opened the door, she was stunned. Oh my god, was this really her home? Did she go to the wrong door? She couldn't help but step back and look at the number. It was right. This was her house. At that moment, there were no lights on the hall. Instead, there was a small yellow glow. It was very lively and seemed especially warm. The ground was covered with rose petals and the air was filled with a pleasant fragrance. When she walked in further, Jade found that there were heart-shaped candles in the hall leading from the doorway. They formed a path and guided her. There was a hint of surprise in her eyes. She really liked this scene. She never dreamed that she would walk into such a romantic setting. As soon as she entered the room, a beautiful piano piece began to play. The sound was neither soft nor loud, it was just perfect. The kind that made people feel good when they heard it. The figure standing at the end of the path was Dario. He was dressed in a hand-cut suit and his hair was neat and tidy. He stood there straight and tall, welcoming her. Under the gentle light, his body seemed even more attractive and his face was so handsome, no matter how he looked at it. God, Jade almost fainted from seeing it. Mr. Foster, these candles and roses. Jade stood at the door and did not dare move. She was afraid that if she took a step forward, this beautiful fantasy would be shattered. She wanted to keep this scene in her mind forever. Do you like it? Darius said as he came over to where she was. He held her hand and walked forward step by step. The lovely candlelight flickered slightly. It was like a dream. Daria pulled Jade forward, and she followed him as if she had lost her soul. They walked all the way to the table. The dining table was also dressed up. It was covered with a layer of nice tablecloths, with more beautiful candles on top. There were exquisite steaks and a fruit salad set on the table. Mr. Foster, why are you making this so grand? Jade looked at him in confusion. What exactly was going on? Let's sit down and eat. Daria pulled her chair out and guided her to sit down. Until now... Jade was still in a daze. When she came to, Dario was already sitting opposite her. He gave her a faint smile. Under the warm candlelight, his eyes seemed exceptionally gentle. Jade looked at him in awe. Finally, she could not help but ask, Mr. Foster, what kind of good day is it today? Could it be your birthday? When she said this, she was a little flustered. She realized she didn't know when his birthday was. If that were really the case, wouldn't she be embarrassed? Not only did she not remember the date, she didn't even prepare a gift. No. Luckily, Dario said it wasn't. If today was not his birthday, what day could it be? Jade really couldn't think of another day between them that was worth making such a big fuss about. Dario picked up the red wine on the table and poured it into two beautiful goblets. The sweet fragrance of the wine immediately came over her. You'll know in a while. Let's eat first. Dario deliberately kept her in suspense, which made Jade's heart itch. Still... She was too embarrassed to ask. If she missed some important day, she either didn't know or forgot. Episode 144 Romantic Candlelit Dinner Dario looked at Jade's curious yet shy cute face and wanted to immediately hold her in his arms. You'll know what day it is later, Dario said very mysteriously, as if he did not intend to tell her the truth at all. After a while, Jade pouted and finally couldn't help but ask. She felt like otherwise, she wouldn't even be able to eat. Mr. Foster, can't you just tell me? Dario looked at her tender lips and said lightly, We've been married for a month. Today is our full month anniversary. What? Jade was very surprised when she first heard this answer. Later, she calculated the date carefully. They had indeed been married for a month, but she had never heard of a full month anniversary. What's more, she didn't expect Dario to remember the date more clearly than she did. She was touched. So he cared about the day. Did that imply that he cared about her, too? Hurry up and eat. Do you want me to feed you? No need, Mr. Foster. I can eat it myself. Jade quickly regained her senses and started to use her fork and knife. But she rarely ate steak, so she did not cut it well. Dario carefully cut the steak for her. Besides the steak was a heart-shaped dab of cream sauce. Jade looked at the food on the plate and felt a surge of warmth in her heart. 
She was still angry with him earlier today, but now she was a little moved. No one had ever spent so much time and effort on her. Jade was immersed in the romantic atmosphere. It was exceptionally dreamlike, as if she were eating with him in a high-class restaurant. This was the first time she was dining with him in such a romantic and warm situation. Perhaps Jade was too happy, she realized. She never liked drinking, but she'd actually taken the initiative to extend her hand to the red wine Dario poured for her. She gently held the glass and smiled at him. There was a rare joy in her eyes. Thank you for the dinner you prepared for me. Jade had a sweet smile on her face. Dario also picked up his glass and gently touched it to hers. Cheers, Jade shouted happily. Dario did not say anything. He took a sip elegantly. Jade watched him swallow and looked at his half-closed dark eyes, his handsome face. Everything about him was so gorgeous that she could not get tired of looking at him, no matter how she looked at him. Even if she did not drink, she felt a little drunk just looking at Dario. Jade carefully held the wine glass. The sweet red wine carried a spiciness as it slid down her throat. The dinner was the longest they had eaten since they'd known each other. They only finished after eight o'clock. During this time, Jade had taken the initiative to drink with Dario several times in order to thank him. Although the amount of red wine was not very high, it only took Jade a few cups for her face to turn red. Her small, delicate face appeared even more charming. Are you satisfied with tonight's dinner? Dario walked to her side and picked up the napkin on the table. He gently wiped the residue from the corner of her mouth. Then he bent over, directly stuck out his tongue and licked the corner of her lips. Jade was shocked. She sat there blankly and looked at him without moving. She seemed to be at a loss. Before Jade could speak, Dario took her hand and leaned close to her ear. He said to her in his extremely charming voice, I heard that exercise after meals helps digestion. Jade felt a little shy when she heard the word exercise. She thought to herself that Dario was always teasing her, so she should know that he really just meant exercise. Before Jade could react, Dario actually bent down and extended his hand in front of her in a very gentlemanly manner. Miss Winslet, I don't know if I've had the honour of inviting you to dance. Dario's face carried a faint smile, and his eyes were full of sincerity. This made Jade a little embarrassed. She shyly withdrew her hands and said awkwardly, Actually, Mr. Foster, I don't know how to... Just when she started to say that she did not know how to dance... Dario directly grabbed her hand and pulled her into standing. At the same time, he placed his left hand on her waist and spun her around with his right. At this moment, the music turned into a classic waltz, Blue Danube River. Dario took the opportunity to waltz with her. I'll teach you. He increased the force on her waist and began to dance with her. Because she did not know how to dance, Jade's body was very stiff at first. But under Dario's lead, she slowly started to dance alongside his footsteps. Dario's black suit and tall figure made him look elegant and noble. Although Jade did not choose her clothes today for any particular reason, she happened to be wearing a red dress. The dress was tight and the hem was exceptionally graceful. It made her perfect curves look wonderful. They danced along with the rhythm of the music and the candlelight. Dario's powerful face held a smile that could not be seen clearly leaving her to her endless imagination. When Jade got used to the waltz, Dario began to increase his speed. Soon, with a slight turn, Jade fell naturally into Dario's arms. She was shocked. Her heart could not help beating a little. Dario raised his hand again, and Jade spun around twice before being pulled back into his arms. She raised her left foot high, and one of her hands was pulled by him. The two of them looked at each other with deep affection. For a beginner, this kind of speed was a bit intense. Jade was panting. Along with having just had wine, she was now almost out of strength. She could only lean on Dario's strong arm with soft steps. When the music ended, Dario lowered his eyes and looked at her delicate and slightly parted red lips. He could not help but kiss her. Mr. Foster. Jade felt that she could not stand steadily and could not help but call his name. Dario held her hand and placed it on his neck. He approached her lips and said gently, Don't be afraid. Hold me. Episode 145 The Most Delicious Thing Jade could only hold on to Dario to support her body. 
Dario lowered his head and kissed her lips. She could clearly feel his tongue moving in her mouth. Because both of them had drank red wine, there was a strong smell of it in their mouths. But even if the two of them did not drink, they still would have been fascinated while kissing. Jade felt a numbing sensation coming from her mouth. She kept dodging, but Dario could easily find her tongue. He gently sucked on it. He kept teasing her, making her body even softer. She could not even stand steadily. Dario reached out and held her behind. He could not wait to pick her up. He kissed her and carried her to the bedroom. Jade's eyes were very charming. She stared at him closely. At this moment, her appearance was very tempting. He could not help but want to make love to her. By the time Jade could react, he had already pushed her down onto the soft bed. Just when Dario wanted to kiss her again, Jade suddenly stretched out her somewhat powerless hand. She wanted to stop him, but she gasped and asked, Mr. Foster, what do you want? She was breathing heavily, her chest heaving up and down. At this moment, she was very seductive. To eat you. A low voice sounded in her ear. Jay could not help trembling when she heard this. She lowered her head shyly and pretended not to understand. Mr. Foster, I am not food. Why do you want to eat me? You are the most delicious thing in the world. Dario kissed her again. He kept sucking on her tender lips as if he was tasting the delicacies of the world. His eyes became more and more intoxicated. The light in the bedroom was not turned on. Only the faint moonlight shone in. She could clearly see his silhouette. She tried to push his sturdy chest away, but the more she resisted, the harder his kiss became. His movements became more and more violent, as if he wanted to put her whole body into his body. The distance between them was getting closer and closer. Despite wearing all their clothing, she could feel his hot chest underneath his shirt. She didn't know when Dario had taken off his suit jacket. He had already unbuttoned his shirt, revealing his strong chest and hard muscles. Under the night sky, the atmosphere between them became more and more passionate. Mr. Foster, don't be like this. Jade, who was fascinated by the kiss, immediately reached out and pinched her thigh. She hoped that the pain could keep her calm. She did not want to experience the feeling from the night before. His kiss always fascinated her, and then he would suddenly ignore her. Although he was very handsome, he could not keep casually teasing her like this. He could be enthusiastic at one moment and at the next one, very cold. It was truly unbearable for her. Jade kept reminding herself that she could not do this anymore. She needed to remain very reserved. She could no longer fall in love with his kiss. She was sure that even with a thousand years of practice, she could not defeat the man in front of her. Jade forcefully turned her head to the side not letting his kiss touch her slightly swollen lips. She pushed him away and escaped to the edge of the bed, deliberately keeping a distance from him. Her chest kept rising and falling and her head felt a little dizzy, but she wanted to keep herself awake. She had to make the right choice when she was awake. After Dario was rejected by her, he did not do anything else. Her actions had also gone outside of his expectations. This was not the first time she had pushed him away, but the atmosphere between them had never been so awkward. The originally warm and romantic mood had suddenly dropped to a freezing point. In an instant, only the sound of two people's breathing was left in the darkness. This was a terrifying silence. The moonlight shone on Jade's beautiful face. She sat on the edge of the bed, breathing heavily. After a long time, she slowly opened her mouth to speak. Mr. Foster, I I beg you, don't do this to me, okay? I really... Jade almost trembled. She did not know how much of her courage it took to say these words. It is very uncomfortable. Dario said what she wanted to say next. Jade was stunned and did not reply. She just tightly bit her lower lip. She always felt that in front of him, she would never have secrets. She was indeed very uncomfortable. This kind of thing should make anyone feel uncomfortable. Dario slowly moved over from behind her. He held her body and let her rest in his arms. Tell me why you feel uncomfortable. Dario's magnetic voice was beautiful. It kept attracting her, making her want to tell the truth. Jade pulled his hand away from her waist. She gritted her teeth and said stubbornly, I don't feel uncomfortable at all. Then why are you angry? I'm not angry at all. Weren't you angry at me yesterday? Well... You treated me like that the day before yesterday. Why can't I be angry? 
They looked at each other and fell into silence. Why didn't you tell me your true feelings? Daria asked in a deep voice. He was confused. He forced her to look at him. She wanted to lower her head, but Dario did not give her this chance. He held her chin tightly and made her look up at him. I'm telling you the truth. I don't know what else you want to know, Jade said calmly. I just want to know what you think. This is what I really think, Mr. Foster. I know you're good to me, but you keep teasing me. This makes me very sad. The more Jade spoke, the more she choked. She looked very sad. Just as she wanted to say something else, he kissed her hard. It was different from the gentle kiss just before. He even reached out and pressed the back of her head so that the two of them could kiss even more deeply. Jade felt a little suffocated. She was dizzy because of his kiss. She almost could not breathe. In the end, she couldn't take it anymore and started hitting his chest, but he still did not plan to let go. She could only bite his lips. Although his lips didn't bleed, she bit very hard and he felt some pain. He frowned slightly. He knew that she could not take it anymore, but he could not bear to let go of her. At this moment, he looked very unhappy, but there was no emotion in his eyes. It was impossible to see his true thoughts. Episode 146 Do you want me? Jay came back to her senses and looked at Dara in panic. Only now did she realize that she had just caused a huge disaster. She lowered her head and did not dare to look at him. She was afraid and apologetic as she said, I'm sorry, Mr. Foster, I didn't do it on purpose. Silently in her heart, Jade was saying, Who asked you to use so much force? I almost couldn't breathe. You deserve it. She tremblingly raised her head. Until then, she hadn't realized that Dario was looking at her with a deep gaze, as if he wanted to see through her. Tell me, what are you thinking? If you don't say it, I will make you unable to catch your breath. Daria approached her face and tightly pinched her chin. There was even a trace of threat. Jade immediately felt like she was in danger. She knew that he did what he said, but she was conflicted. What did he want to know? His kiss really was too fierce. She had yet to catch her breath from it. She patted her own chest and rested for a long time. She stared at him spitefully. Mr. Foster, I already said it. What I said just now was what I was thinking. So what do you want me to say? Are you still not willing to say it? Looks like you really want to continue, right? Dario narrowed his dark eyes. He kept getting closer to her, pretending to be about to kiss her again. How could Jade endure such an intense kiss? She quickly turned her face away. She refused him. Mr. Foster, what exactly do you want? I don't really want to be kissed by you. Then tell me, why are you angry? Dario's tone softened a little. He asked the question again, as if he would not stop until he knew the answer. Jade hesitated, but she was still unable to say it out loud. You are not willing to say it? Dario smiled. He kissed her delicate lips again and bit her as if he wanted to punish her. Just as she was about to lose her breath, Dario suddenly said something. It's because you care about me. I ignored you. It made you feel bad, didn't it? No, it didn't. When he heard this, Jade's heart had suddenly jumped. She bit her lower lip tightly and did not want to talk anymore. She didn't want to admit to what he said. Yes, she cared about him very much. In his eyes, she would never have secrets. He would see through her at a glance. She would not admit it or refute it, but her eyes clearly told him that this was the answer. Dario still refused to give in. When he saw that she still refused to open her mouth, he stuck his tongue into her ear again, making her entire body tingle. Moreover, a strange feeling arose in her body. A numbing feeling spread from her ear all the way to her entire body. If you still won't tell the truth, then I shall continue. Dario felt her trembling body and a trace of success flashed across his eyes. Then, he gently exhaled into her ear. This was her most sensitive part. Jade could not take it anymore. Jade shrunk her neck and hurriedly covered her ears. She stared at him and looked at him very unhappily. She knew that if she did not tell the truth, he would not let it go. She told him all of her thoughts, but she said it in a tone of anger. Mr. Foster, you know everything. So why do you still have to keep asking? Daria looked at her mad little face and finally smiled handsomely. It was not easy to get Jade to speak. He did not expect that she would have such a stubborn side. He did not expect that he would spend so much time and effort on such a simple woman. 
because I want to hear you say it yourself. Dario had a meaningful smile on his face. He sounded calm, but also aggressive. His words completely broke the last line of defense in Jade's heart. Yes, I care about you. I care about how cold you are to me. I care about what you think of me. I care about you having intimate contact with other women. You heard it now. Are you satisfied? Jade was very embarrassed that she was forced to say what she was thinking. Her small face turned red because she had said too much in one breath. She originally thought that after she said so much, he had to have some reaction. He should at least give some explanation, but he seemed to have expected it long ago, and he looked at her very calmly. Who was it that said that she could control her own heart? Dario finally looked satisfied. He looked deeply into Jade's eyes. Jade turned her head and looked at him angrily. She wanted to urgently get rid of her embarrassment and could only start babbling nonsense. I did. So what? What does it have to do with you? I won't tell you anymore. I'm going to shower and sleep. Hmm. Anyway, you don't care about me. Not only that, you only know how to tease me. I hate you, Mr. Foster. She got off the bed in a half. She was about to walk into the bathroom when Dario came forward and pressed her against the wall. His hands grabbed her arms domineeringly. The cold feeling behind her slowly woke her up. A pair of blazing eyes stopped on her body. Then, before you take your shower, can you tell me when you started to feel this way? Dario got closer and closer. The smile on his face became more and more intense. Today, he seemed to like smiling very much. Jade knew that his question was when she started to care so much about him. But if she said it, then it was just her taking the initiative to confess to him. Why? She had never confessed her love to a man before, apart from in scenes, of course. Besides, shouldn't this be done by the man? Dario had never told her that he liked her, much less that he loved her. Why should she speak first? When did I say I cared about you? Jade said stubbornly. She did not know when she started to care so much about Dario. Maybe it was when she was in danger again and again, when he appeared to save her. Maybe it was at the airport when she saw him talking to other women. Every time she experienced something with him, she liked him more and more. Dario knew that she was shy, so he didn't ask any more questions. He also understood her feelings. He decided he would be satisfied with what she had said. It did not matter. In the future, he would slowly train his little wife and let her learn how to talk about love to him. Next time, no matter how you want to scold me or hit me, or how you feel dissatisfied or uncomfortable, or if you want me, you have to tell me honestly. Do you know that? Dario held her in his arms and spoke in a gentle voice. Jade was very touched when she heard those words. But when she heard the last sentence, he said, she was speechless. Episode 147. He gave her the ring. But it was also because of this that a flicker of shrewdness suddenly appeared in her confused eyes and she looked at him as if she had suddenly understood something. Mr. Foster, you know what I'm thinking, right? You did it on purpose, didn't you? Jade pouted. She felt that everything was under his control. She'd been tricked by him. He had gone too far. Little fool, if I didn't do it, you still wouldn't be telling the truth. Dario reached out his hand and touched her little nose. It was very intimate. Is this why you were so cold to me before? Jade said in disbelief. Suddenly, she felt that this calm man in front of her was a little childish. In order to make her speak the truth, he had spent so much effort. Guess. Dario blinked and answered vaguely. Mr. Foster, you are too much. You neglected me for half a month just to hear me say that I care about you? Did you ever think about how I would feel? Jade angrily stared at him. That entire half a month, she did not get any response from him and was so uncomfortable and he actually still had an indifferent look on his face. Could it be that he did not care about her at all? Seeing Jade's angry expression, Dario finally could not resist kissing her mouth and said rather helplessly, Do you really think that I didn't do anything for half a month? What do you mean? Jade looked at him blankly. Dario did not give her an answer. He just pinched her nose and said, Think about it. Although Dario did not say it directly, Jade roughly guessed it. During those days... She always felt that someone quietly walked into her room when she was sleeping and then left before she woke up. That was why she slept so soundly. Could it be that Dario really rushed over from Washington to watch over her every night? 
Jay could not help but be shocked by this thought. Wouldn't it be too unreasonable to think that? No, it couldn't be true. Just as she was struggling with this, Daria pushed her into the bathroom and whispered into her ear, Remember to wash up. I want to eat you later. Mr. Foster, eating human flesh is against the law. Jade glared at him fiercely and closed the bathroom door with a bang. In order to prevent him from coming in, she locked the door. After showering, Jade went to the sink to wash her face. She suddenly found a small, beautiful box next to her skincare products. She knew very well that there was nothing there this morning. What was this? Could it be Dario's? Jade curiously picked it up and looked at it. When she opened it, she was stunned on the spot. Inside the box was a diamond ring. There were 28 small diamonds sparkling around the huge center diamond. It was extremely beautiful. The diamond ring was ordered specially by Dario in England. It was made half a month ago. Every diamond inlaid on it was priceless, especially the diamond in the middle. That one was as expensive as a pigeon egg. It had been sold for 3 million US dollars. Jade trembled as she held the diamond ring in her hand. She could not believe it. Was this real? Was this for her? Jade quietly looked at the door. With the idea of just giving it a try, she picked up the diamond ring and put it on her finger. She did not expect the size to be just right. It was as if it was prepared for her by nature. The diamond sparkled under the light and appeared exceptionally dazzling. Dario stood at the door and suddenly asked, Is the ring nice? What are you talking about? Jade was shocked. Knowledge is the wedding ring I gave you, Dario said lightly. Jade remembered Ivana showing off her ring and mocked her for not having a ring of her own. It was obvious how important a ring was. A marriage ring was representative of a marriage and representative of a wife's identity. The marriage ring that Dario bought for her meant that he attached great importance to this marriage and attached great importance to her. Jade originally thought that he married her because he wanted to find someone to accompany him. After all, they had not known each other for long at the time. However, after she got along with him, she realized that Dario treated her more seriously than she had imagined. Jade opened the bathroom door with trembling hands. Dario stood at the door and waited. The moment he opened the door, he realized that Jade's eyes were filled with tears. He held her in his arms and gently stroked her hair. His tone was exceptionally gentle. What are you crying for? This should have belonged to you. This is what I owe you. No, Mr. Foster, you don't owe me anything. You've already given me enough. Even without this ring, she was still touched. She did not expect that he could bring her so many surprises in a short day. She was instantly moved and could not say anything. Do you think that I don't care about your feelings because I just treat you as a tool to warm the bed? Dario said plainly, but there was a trace of heartache in his eyes. In fact, the moment Jade saw the ring, all her grievances and uneasiness disappeared. She even started to blame herself. How could she misunderstand him? But she still said very angrily, You just admitted it yourself. Of course you are not just a tool to warm the bed. Jade was just about to question him when his kiss landed on her lips again. Jade, who had just taken a shower, was already a little hot. Adding this kiss and his hot body, her body temperature raised even higher. Her white skin also revealed a trace of pink. Her delicate and alluring appearance made it impossible to resist kissing her. Dario once again pressed her against the cold wall and kissed her hard. Jade almost couldn't remember how many times they had kissed today. Every time she recovered, she was pressed back by him again. It was as if he was going to take back the loss of this half a month. Jade's breathing and heartbeat gradually became chaotic. Her powerless body could only lean against the wall behind her. Episode 148 My heart is the same as yours. Just as she was about to slide down the wall, she put her hand on his neck and the two of them came closer together. She did not reject him, nor did she want to push him away. She even took the initiative to respond to him. She stuck out her tongue and intertwined it with Dario's. When Dario's kiss almost suffocated her, he hugged her tightly again and began to suck her tender neck, her chest rising and falling. Finally, through her pajamas, he used his mouth to hold one of the small bumps on her chest. What made her even more embarrassed was that he even used his teeth to nibble lightly. Something that she had never experienced before continuously spread in Jade's body. She did not know what kind of feeling this was. 
She only knew that her body slowly began to feel strange. It was as strange as the last time she was drugged. Her entire body was hot. Ah, Mr. Foster, what are you doing? At this moment, Jade's voice was exceptionally soft. It was so soft that it could melt one's bones. It was this wave of unintentional, coquettish panting that immediately made Dario's lower abdomen heat up. His throat began to go dry, making him suck even more forcefully. I'm eating you, Dario said with a hoarse, patient voice as he moved to her earlobe. He kissed her earlobe and touched her chest with his other hand. When she felt the hot hand touch her sensitive parts, Jade's body could not help but tremble. That unusual feeling became even stronger. Ah, Mr. Foster, don't do this, okay? Jade squinted her eyes and couldn't help but gasp. When this voice came out of her mouth, even she herself thought it was actually some other charming person. Did that voice really come out of her mouth? When Daria heard her, he could not keep it together any longer, and his movements became even more ferocious. Do you still want to call me Mr. Foster? Really? Daria kissed her earlobe and walked around her even more brazenly. Before Jade could react, his hands had already reached into her pajamas and touched her smooth skin. What else should I call you? Jade said with difficulty breathing. Now her entire body was weak and she was completely controlled by Dario. Of course you should call me hubby, or maybe you should call me by name. Dario's hand had already reached under her skirt. He could easily touch her round butt through her thin underwear. Ah, Mr. Foster, don't be like this. Jade's body felt more and more strange. She wanted to take Dario's hand away, but with her strength, she definitely could not resist him. This made him even more willful in her pajamas. Under his touch, her skin seemed to have become even redder. The ring on her hand was sparkling. It was even more dazzling than the bright moon. I'm going to eat you. Dario, who had long been aroused by love, moved closer to her ear. How are you going to eat me? Jade answered in a daze, completely out of her control. She only felt him whisper in her ear. You'll know later. She was carried to the soft water bed by him. Because of the vibration, the water in the bed continuously rippled and Jade's body swayed along with it. Dario turned on the dim light on the bed and the atmosphere immediately became uncertain. Jade's body felt this unknown fear and tensed up. She did not dare to move at all. Be good and relax. Dario's magic voice sounded in her ear. After that, he began to kiss her face gently. Every movement was very focused and serious. It was also very gentle. He kissed her on her eyebrows, eyes, nose, and then a little bit lower. Jade's originally clear eyes were now covered with a layer of fog. A strange feeling spread in her heart. She felt his kiss landing on her face and then his hand gently caressing her body. She went from resisting at the beginning to accepting and adapting. Under his gentle, long foreplay, Jade actually felt by the end that she somewhat liked this feeling. She liked being kissed by him like this and being touched by him like this. There were even a few times when she could not help but make an unfamiliar, coquettish cry. Every time she wanted to let out a strange sound in her throat, she would bite her lip tightly, not wanting to let herself cry out. However, she did not know that her reluctant manner had aroused Dario's interest even more. It made him want to tease her even more to make her make these sounds under his body. Come over and help me take off my clothes. Dario pulled her little hand and asked her to take off her clothes too. Jade was in a daze and did not refuse. When she took off her underwear, she felt awkward. His member was already high up and wanted to break out. The tight underwear could not hide what was inside. Jade was shocked and quickly retracted her hand. She was very shy. Although this had happened before, she could still not accept simply doing this kind of thing. Dario did not force her. He took off his clothes and threw them to the side. He pressed himself tightly to her body. Even through the fabric of her pajamas, she could clearly feel something hot was pressing against her private part. She took a deep breath and felt a numbing and somewhat comfortable feeling coming from her lower body. Because she was afraid, she couldn't help but reach out her hand to grab his arm and dig her nails in. But Dario didn't care about such a small matter. He buried his head in front of her chest. An inexplicable sense of pleasure, like a wave, overcame Jade. Mr. Foster. Jade grabbed at his strong arm helplessly, because this was her first time doing this. She did not know what to do next. She was very nervous and could not stop trembling. 
Daria comforted her and kissed her lips. Using an extremely seductive voice, he lured her. Don't be afraid, I'm here. For some reason, Jade heard his voice and felt his kiss and immediately felt less afraid. But she did not know if she should continue because she still had questions in her heart. Mr. Foster, do you really want to do that to me? Then what will you do to me after? Jade lifted her head and looked into his eyes that were filled with desire. She had to ask clearly. My heart is the same as yours. Dario did not answer her directly. Instead, he replied with these words. Then he gently kissed her lips. When she heard Dario's answer, she immediately felt relieved. She felt that the uneasiness and doubts of the past half a month ago had been resolved. He said that his feelings were the same as hers. That meant that he was also like her, that he cared about her too. Episode 149. Why do you still want to make love? Jade reached out and squeezed Dario's fingers. Only then could she feel safe. Could she really give herself completely to this man in front of her? Dario impatiently took off her pajamas. At first, Jade was not that shy, but when he was about to take off her underwear, she pulled hard to keep her underwear up. No matter what, she would not let him do this. If he took off her underwear too, he would see her naked body. Mr. Foster, I'm scared. Jade twisted her body away. She wanted him to keep touching her, but at the same time, she was afraid of what was going to happen next. Don't be afraid. You have to call me by my name. Dario patiently kissed her ear and coaxed her. His hand gently caressed her body and comforted her. Dario! Every time Jade wanted to call him Mr. Foster, he would bite her earlobe like a punishment, making her feel very uncomfortable. In the end, she had no choice but to call him by his name. Her gentle and seductive voice reached Dario's ears, instantly making him restless. He pressed his mouth close to hers. He used his commanding tongue to kiss her heart and then said, Say my name again. Dario, Jade said, shaking her head. You will call me that from now on, okay? I like when you call me by my name. Dario kissed her forehead in satisfaction and stopped teasing her. When he felt that it was the right time, Dario straightened his body and slowly entered her body. Although he was already moving very slow, Jade still grimaced. She was extremely nervous and her entire body was tense. She felt that his manhood was bigger than what she usually saw. Dario saw her pained expression. He did not dare to go in anymore. This was the first time he cared so much about a person's feelings. His movements were so slow and gentle. He was careful, as if he was afraid of hurting the person beneath him. Jade tightly bit her lower lip and panted. She could not help but look at him. Although she was in pain, she did not say anything. She just tightly held onto the bedsheet. Her face was covered in sweat and her lips were about to bleed. She wanted to pretend that she was not in pain. She did not want Dario to be upset because of her. However, she could not escape his eyes. Dario felt sorry for her when he saw her look. He put his hand on her lips. He rubbed his hand against them. Finally, he sighed. He suppressed his desire and withdrew from her body. His heart ached as he said, Let's not make love. But just as he was about to leave, Jade reached out and wrapped her arms around his waist. She said in an extremely gentle voice, It's okay, Dario. I can do it. Seeing her persistent gaze, Dario suddenly became very serious. He wiped the sweat off her forehead and said worriedly, Are you sure you want to continue? Jade quietly looked at his tender eyes. Although she was very afraid, she had made up her mind to give herself to him completely. Sheila was right. Only in this way would this family be considered complete. She firmly nodded her head. She had already agreed. She even took the initiative to hug his body to hers, making him stick closely to her. It was also because of her permission that Dario's manhood became even more swollen. His eyes flashed with a trace of light and joy. This was the first time she had done something like this to him. He put his arm in between Jade's teeth and said softly, If you're in pain, bite me. I will be careful. Jade shyly nodded, but she knew that she could not bear to bite him. Mr. Foster, I believe you. I am willing to give myself to you. Jade felt like her body was about to burst when she said the last part. Dario had prepared himself well before making love. While kissing her, he took advantage of her distraction to enter her body. At first, Jade only felt pain. She even wanted to stop a few times, but when she saw Dario's gentle and expectant eyes, 
She resisted the pain. Dario could feel her trembling. He tried his best to slow down. When he saw the pained expression on Jade's face disappear, he started to speed up his movements. Slowly, Jade broke free from the pain and tasted a trace of joy. That was a comfort she had never felt before. She even wanted to moan several times. Dario quietly enjoyed the feeling of having sex with her. He did not get tired of it. He liked this feeling very much. Jade didn't even know when she fell asleep. She just felt very tired. But that comfortable feeling appeared again and again. This made her very fascinated. They made love over and over until she was exhausted. Still, he didn't seem to be tired. He wanted to keep making love to her. The room became filled with a strong smell of love and desire. The next day, Jade was woken up by his touch. Mr. Foster, don't touch me. I'm so sleepy. Dario did not say anything, nor did he stop what he was doing. Suddenly, she felt someone pressing down on her. Even more, it was as if something else was touching her. She suddenly opened her eyes and discovered that she was lying there naked, and Dario was also naked. The two of them were very close. At that moment, Dario was pressing on her body, licking her most sensitive parts. Because she was not wearing clothes, he could easily kiss the tops of her chest. Ah, Mr. Foster, what are you doing? You've gone too far. Jade screamed and could not help kicking him. This was too much excitement for this early in the morning. She really suspected that Dario had taken an aphrodisiac. Why did he have so much desire for her? He had made love with her so many times yesterday, yet he actually still wanted to make love today. When Jade thought of what had happened the night before, she immediately felt shy and wanted to find a place to sit up. The morning sunlight passed through the gap between the curtains and shone on their naked bodies. Jade hurriedly pushed Dario away and pulled up the blanket to cover herself. She turned her head to the side, not daring to look at his naked body because it was too attractive. Episode 150. A beautiful day has begun. Neither of them were wearing any clothes, so they felt very good. Jay could even feel Dario's thick leg hair rubbing against her smooth thighs. This posture was really too ambiguous. Why did she go to sleep without putting on her pajamas last night? Jade knew that she couldn't easily answer the ambiguous question Dario had just asked. I'm not awake yet, she said, as she looked at him angrily. Dario raised his eyebrows and pressed against her even harder. She could clearly feel him pressing against her. Because she wasn't wearing any underwear, she could distinctly feel his heat, his shape, and everything about him. Jade felt very shy. You haven't woken up yet. I'll wake you up. A beautiful day has begun. Dario leaned close to her ear and spoke in a lazy and hoarse voice. He had just woken up. Jade covered her red face and didn't dare to look into his eyes. Before she could completely wake up, she felt a familiar sense of haste and of being attacked. She could clearly feel Dario violently hitting her body. He was even more violent than the day before. Jade, who hadn't woken up yet, couldn't endure the stimulation. She soon submitted to him and couldn't stop herself from breathing harder. Ah, Mr. Foster, what are you doing? Stop! Things were moving so fast that she felt like a huge wave was pouring down on her. Are you sure you want to stop? Dario revealed a mischievous smile and immediately stopped what he was doing. Jade wasn't used to it. After he went out, she felt that her body was empty and it made her feel uncomfortable. She wasn't used to this, but she was too embarrassed to open her mouth so she could only quietly whisper to Dario. Do you want to continue? Dario stared at her twisting body, and a trace of success appeared in his eyes. Jade stubbornly replied, No! You really don't want to? No! No! However, when his hand touched her body, she immediately revealed a coquettish expression. Getting up early to exercise is good for you, Dario said calmly, and then went back into her body. Jade bit her lower lip so that she wouldn't scream. Her body didn't resist. Compared to Jade's rosy face, her body was fairer and whiter. The two of them didn't seem to be doing the same thing. His movements were very gentle. She only began to slowly increase her speed after getting used to it. Daria's gaze was fixed on her body. Slowly, her body changed. He felt her trembling in his arms. He liked to look at her face and watch her expression slowly change from pain to happiness. Jade gave her first time to this man. She felt that she was forcefully woken up after still being asleep. Afterward, Jade was filled with an unfamiliar feeling for a long time. Dario quietly hugged her and gently kissed her face. He wiped the sweat from her face, and his eyes were full of satisfaction. 
Compared to Jade's tired face, Dario appeared especially energetic. Jade's entire body was soft and collapsed in his arms. She only felt a burst of pain from the inside of her thigh. She even found moving very difficult. She lay in his arms in a daze, and she still felt dizzy after being awake for a little while. She really hadn't expected Dario to ask her to sacrifice herself so many times in one night. It was almost like torturing her to death. She lay there powerlessly and didn't want to move at all. After a while, she found that she was still naked on Dario's body. Her body was wet and sticky, and the blanket was filled with passion in their love. She narrowed her eyes and looked at the sunlight that was shining on the floor. She seemed to have thought of something and suddenly sat up. She anxiously grabbed her phone and looked at the time. Sure enough, it was already past eight o'clock. She thought it was strange that she had slept in since she had clearly turned on her alarm clock. Why did the alarm not ring again? She immediately looked at Dario with a frown on her face and asked angrily, Why did you turn off my alarm clock again? Didn't I tell you that I'm going back to the film crew today and that I can't be late? Mr. Foster, you're really too bad. After speaking, Jade immediately felt that she was awake. She wanted to quickly climb out of the bed, but when she stepped on the ground, she found that her entire body was sore. Even moving was difficult for her. She was even more tired than she was after shooting a whole day of scenes. Jade felt that her entire body was soft. When she was about to fall, Daria appeared just in time and held her from behind. He even pulled her back to the bed and kissed her on the cheek. He said very calmly, Don't be anxious. I've already applied for leave for you. It's been a week. Jade turned around and looked at him in shock. She said in disbelief, What? You already applied for leave? Yes, Dario nodded. Did the director agree? You can ask him yourself. Jade couldn't help but doubt Dario's words. She hesitatingly grabbed her phone and looked at it carefully. She actually found a message from the director. He told her to rest for another week before coming back to film. She rubbed her eyes in disbelief. How was that possible? She had never heard of anyone taking such a long vacation. Even Michael Porter had never taken such a long leave of absence, and she had already rested for three days. In total, that meant she had 10 days left. But she should have finished filming by the end of the week. Wouldn't a week off slow down her progress? But won't this be bad? Jade looked at Dario in disbelief and seemed very hesitant. She didn't know if she should rest or not. She kept feeling that a week off was a little strange. She couldn't believe that the director had actually agreed to let her, the lead actress, take such a long leave of absence, especially since she wasn't sick or in pain. And though she felt that it was strange, she still didn't say anything. Since the director had agreed, she would stay and spend time with her grandmother and Mr. Foster. No buts. The director has already said it, so what are you afraid of? Are you tired? Lie down obediently. Daria smiled slightly and narrowed his dark eyes. He only wanted to push Jade down.